And now, streaming out of Northeast Ohio, representing Marks, Drunks, and a little bit of kayfabe, AIW Fan Club. It's wrestling and podcasting, previewing and reviewing all motherfucking day. People of the world, I give to you wrestling fucking cheers. Taking your way in the world today takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to go where you can see that troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. And welcome back to Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name, especially on Black Friday. This is Wrestling Chairs. We'd like to talk about things going on in Northeast Ohio independent wrestling scene. We preview shows, we review shows, and sometimes we even have interviews along the way. This is a preview for this Friday's show from AIW Hell on Earth 17. I'm your host, Justin Summers, and Wrestling Chairs is brought to you by Midwest Territory. Please rate, review, and subscribe your Evanless's fine podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, WrestleChairs.Podbean. Dot com. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Facebook.com slash wrestling cheers, Twitter.com slash wrestling cheers, and Instagram.com slash wrestling cheers. Email if you so you desire wrestling cheers at gmail.com. Like I said, this is a preview for AIW's Hell on Earth 17. I've already introduced myself and I've been trying to get him on for a while, kind of, but recording schedules I knew wouldn't fit all the time. But uh, we have Ed back from Pod Van Dam. Hey. Yellow. Um, so scroll on Twitter and there's this tweet that's like a little video and it's a fish and a drop of water on a lotus leaf. And it's supposed to be like artsy, right? Mm-hmm. And all I can think is someone needs to help that little fucking guy out of that little raindrop and the real water. He can't survive in there. It's upsetting. And this is how we start off wrestling chairs. How do you it's like <laughs> how do you record that? You're your, my first thought would be like, well, better tip this lotus leaves over so this guy gets back in some water. I don't know, different strokes for different folks, I guess. <laughs> don't want to start off talking about Jason David Frank? Uh, that's terribly upsetting. I only had a couple heroes in, when I was growing up, uh, like Nick Foley for sure, and I guess the other would be Tommy Oliver. When it came to Power Rangers, he was like always my favorite, or obviously since he debuted. Like, he yeah, because like, he got fucking accessories. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was, that was everybody's favorite when you're little. It's because Tommy got accessories. He got shields and special swords and his own swords and shit. It was awesome. He caught a weapon that was a musical instrument that my favorite thing thinking about as an adult is okay, the dragon dagger. Uh, everybody kind of says it's like a flute, kind of, you know, you know what I mean? But yes, I know where you're going with this too. It's, but it sounds like a trumpet. It's a synthesizer trumpet, yes. But also, uh, uh, how is he breathing into it? That is another thing. It's less like a flute because he puts his actual lips onto it. So it's more like a woodwind instrument, like a clarinet or something. Well, a flute is a woodwind. Uh, yeah, but I mean like one with a reed. Okay. Yeah. But he has, you have the helmet on. Yeah. You, you can't get wind through there. True. I think he, more or less, if I had to explain it, I would just use the catch all of it's using morphing grid energy. <laughs> it's flowing from the suit into okay. the dagger. Um, I would say. Iconic w- weapon. Iconic weapon in all oh. of pop culture history. Uh, I have one here in my room. Oh, yeah. I, I, do, I do not. Uh, I sold all my stuff. <laughs> I did buy that dragon sword back a couple years ago. Oh. What ah. a sweet toy that was. That was a really cool toy. Was it the original or the legacy? original one. Oh, i like yeah. i really i really love the original like that was like i had everything tommy as a kid had yeah. the had the dragon sword which obviously came with the figure later mm-hmm. on i ended up getting the dragon dagger um played with played with them all the fucking time and i've even said the what was the exact megazord name that was instead of the t-rex it was the dragon sword uh the dragon megazord dragon megazord okay that was my favorite mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the coolest. Yeah. 
like had even like a cooler face that compared to the Megazord. Yeah, it's kind of like, the, yeah, it's kind of like the red eyes. Yeah. yeah, like I loved that so much. And then also too, the when you get the Dragon Sword and you put it on top of the uh, Megazord, mm -hmm. that that was cool too. But I I preferred the the Dragon Megazord because too, also too instead of using the sword, you got to uh, have the tail transform into this weapon and everything with a drill. Oh, that was just. That was just so cool. Just think, man, like that White Ranger stuff is never supposed to happen. Really? Yeah, yeah. Um, Jason David Frank was done with Power Rangers after the Green Ranger stuff. like, uh, And they developed VR Troopers for him. So VR Troopers was supposed to be his gig. And then the guy that played the main role in VR Troopers, Brad Hawkins, was supposed to be the White Ranger in Season 2. And uh, JDF got so popular <laughs> that Savon and Fox Kids were like, we got to switch this up. And so they gave Brad Hawkins VR Troopers and brought Tommy back uh, to be the White Ranger. Okay, I read like part of that today, but not knowing that there was the flip. It was like he was supposed to be part of VR, and then they they brought him back for White Ranger. But that is that is crazy. Which you th think about it, like if that didn't happen, we probably wouldn't have like Tommy come back so much. Oh, absolutely not. No. Yeah, he's just hands down my favorite Ranger. Um, every time I see something Dragon Zord out. Whether it be um, something from the original line or like a lot of the legacy stuff, like I want to buy it. I'm I'm upset that I passed on the latest Dragon Dagger that came out. Like I I bought mine that I have now, like not too long before the new one came out. So when the new one came out, I was like, I don't need this. But supposedly, like it plays more like an actual music and in, musical instrument, which I would say would be a better way to explain how the Dragon Dagger actually works, to where you don't have to yeah. breathe into it. It just has those notes like programmed, like to where you could play it like a real instrument. But nonetheless, I looked yeah, up and then him passing. Also, I didn't think about this till just now. It takes away if they ever want to do anything like Lord Dracon. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. You can't do that now. You take away all. Of the, you can't do any of that now in like a movie or nothing. You can't. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, he can't have a, a cameo in like the new movie that they're supposedly doing. Yeah. Because I would figure he would, he, he would potentially have some cameo. I think him and uh, David Yost, who played Billy, is developing it, and I don't think they had a great relationship, so I'm not so sure. I'm, if, if Netflix probably would have made him have a cameo, for sure. Never mind, I didn't think of it, but, like, yeah, if I'm remembering right, him and David Yost were, like, great. <laughs> I could see that, because I know, I know the reasons why David Yost left. Which, yeah. Which, it's great. Like, hearing that story now, it's like... It seems insane, but yeah, like I was the fucking nineties. Yeah, just openly calling slurs by the crew. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, and anything I've ever read, it's just like the crew, and I'm like, what crew? Who the fuck's getting away with that? But that would be st that I don't think people. Well, I can't say it. I don't think people would get away with. I think some aspects of it, it could be difficult to uh, mm -hmm. get away from. But if you're like on the new, you know, Candace Cameron. Uh, TV network, you could probably get away with it. Um, dude, and JDF was so fucking popular that he changed like how they do the show for like the next twenty years after that, because they started switching cast every season. It was to not get JDF'd because I think he could like get shit out of them. Like they had to actually pay him, <laughs> and I don't think they dug that. So like. After In Space, they're like, all right, switching it out every year now, different cast. So that way no one can get more popular than the franchise. Yeah, and he's he, he was easily it. Like, he I was think the entire franchise. <laughs> and everybody, like, after that point, like, I'm not after that point, but everybody, like, within that first season, mm -hmm. or within the, the original Mighty Morphin, like, nobody was as big, and he wasn't even there from the beginning. Right? And he just took over. <laughs> he just... It became like, dude, yeah, that is the face of the entire the, the entire franchise. Like, still, I I remember like when Power Rangers first came out. I think I was in first grade, and like obviously when like you would play Power Rangers out on the playground, like everybody wanted to be the Red Ranger. Yeah, but when the Green Ranger came out, I was like, nah, I want to be the Green Ranger, and that like really fucking threw off the popularity of the Red Ranger. It, I got to be Green Ranger every time because I had long hair. <laughs> nice, I can see it. Mm hmm. Hell yeah, dude. JDF ruled. I mean, I don't know. It's great. Uh, yeah, JDF. Um, definitely the, the greatest the greatest Power Ranger uh, of all time, for sure. I think if I can get my hands on Green with Evil this week, I might try to watch it. It's all on YouTube. 
if, it, if it's all on YouTube, I'll, I'll watch it. I remember in like 2005, 2006, like ABC Family would be would run Power Rangers, and I would just record it and like watch it when I had a chance. Like, and that was like so much fun. And then I, the ironic thing for me was I stopped watching it after the movie came out, and I didn't even like go to the theater and watch the movie. Like I was waiting for it to come out yeah. on VHS, but in between the theatrical run and the release, I was like, eh, I think I'm done. I was I was more into uh, Nick in the Afternoon instead, yeah. and when I went back and like watched all the episodes, like once they did the episodes after the movie, which was not even the movie wasn't even canon, which makes sense because there's a lot of stuff even in that movie that wasn't even canon to everything original. Like oh, but you can hear me on uh, X over talk about <laughs> bug. Yeah, like how how does the the helmet get lights all of a sudden? Just like, yeah, oh, we need... Just that one scene. It was, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, old school Batman theory of like, oh, I need this power. Oh, here it is. Yeah, the power of convenience is what they have. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, watching like those episodes after the movie, I was like, yeah, this is... I'm not into it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and I quit. I think I quit after the movie, too. I remember Alien Rangers... Kind of, but other than that, yeah, I didn't start watching Power Rangers again until like 2009. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got really high and then watched it. Like the show's fucking hilarious, and I've watched every season, and it's all good. Uh, it's just people, you know, in monsters, and then a guy in a robot suit fights a guy in a monster suit. It's fucking awesome. And then uh, of Mighty Morphin, Zed was the the cool one, right? Yeah. Okay. Zed's the best villain. Zed's probably the best Power Rangers villain ever. Yeah, for sure. Zed, my, we've talked about this. Mighty Morphin, not my favorite season, but Zed for sure. I think Zed is no brainer. Best Power Rangers villain ever. Zed ruled, and even like his shitty action figure growing up was still cool. I'm happy they've made new ones that are closer to what he looked like, but even like I have that as a kid. I'm like, this, this guy's fucking awesome. Dude, I was at a convention one time where Robert Axelrod was there. I did the voice for Lord Zed, and uh, my friend asked him, uh, so did you, you, like, have to wear that suit? <laughs> he was like, no, I was in my 60s. <laughs> <laughs> he fell asleep at his table. It was fucking funny. It was a really cute old man thing. He's just sitting there, like, with his head, like, lean back, just off open, just sleeping at his table. The best thing about the movie, last thing I want to say, I... Did like Ivan News. Ivan News is funny. He's just a bad. He has too many powers. Yeah, <laughs> those powers seem to be whatever they need him to have at the moment. Uh, I don't know. He's got gene. I say it on X over. He's got genie syndrome, where it's like, how are you referencing this shit you weren't around for? Yeah. How are you <laughs> mad about missing the Brady Bunch reunion when technically he, not even the Brady Bunch? So yeah, that means it wasn't even the Brady Bunch. He's he's pissed he missed the reunion of the Brady Bunch. It showed that he wasn't around for. It. Yeah, that that's that's one hundred percent true. I was gonna kind of mention something about that. I, yeah. I think the gift that I've used before of avenues that I do love is like what's like what's that hideous smell? Teenagers, yeah. like I I yeah. love that one. I think someone uh, a friend of mine, uh, B J Colangelo, was bitching about like young people on TikTok or something about out commenting about stuff. And I threw that gif in and she was like, Oh, that's perfect. It's like, I know dude. he's the, um, I said, it's kind of like, or so he's really cool. Cause he's the only villain I think in Power Rangers ever. He was the first one for sure. At that point, you said they are going to kill somebody. They were going, they were trying to kill the Power Rangers. Yeah. I don't think they say that in the show ever that they're trying to, I don't think they ever use the word kill. Was the movie PG or PG 13? PG. Okay. I was like, maybe with the violence, it might have been bumped up to. Ah, it's just you can say a thing in a movie that you can't say on Fox Kids. No. They couldn't even run the Spider-Man cartoon. You couldn't even throw punches. Never watch a Spider-Man cartoon. Watch a Spider-Man f- cartoon from uh, Fox Kids. He never throws a punch ever. I like don't like Spider-Man so much that I oh. like erase that out of my memory. To, I mean, to the point of seeing like things on YouTube or showing like, oh, this is what was on. Or should I say probably saw it on TikTok more. Or like this is what was on Fox Kids on, you know, yeah. at this day. And like they'll show you like what the stuff was and they're like Spider-Man. I'm like, I was watching Fox Kids at that time. I don't fucking remember that. I remember Power Rangers being a big deal. I remember X-Men being a big deal, even though I didn't watch it. Like I still understood like, oh, that's like the other thing a lot of people like. I remember some of the other cartoons obviously on at that time, like 
Bobby's World, Eek the Cat. Fuck all if I remember anything about Spider-Man. Like, I always thought people were more referring to, like, the old, old cartoon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah then, that one's bad, too. Then they're like, oh, no, it was on during the ni- in the 90s. I'm like, I don't fucking remember. Yeah, that's, like, one of my big hot takes. I don't like Spider-Man. Like, I watch the movies, but, like, I think as a character, he sucks. But a lot of people, like, love uh, him. And I'm like, yeah. Really loved those first three movies, for sure. I love the second one. <laughs> the second, the sec, I really do like the second one. Like, I think Doc Ock is a badass. Like, oh, the second movie. I thought you meant, like, the second Spider-Man. Like, the, uh, was it Andrew Garfield, that kid? Oh, no, 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 no. I bet, like... <laughs> Aren't those bad? <laughs> No, I bet the, yeah, the second of the three. Second Spider-Man movie, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Even, like, uh, in this, the newer one where they had all the villains come back, like, they they pay, like, really good homage to what Doc Ock was. And I was like, oh, man, that's, like, I think I said after that movie came out, watching it made me go, oh, yeah, like, I love Doc Ock even more now. Oh, speaking of Marvel movies, uh, I got a really good Black Friday deal at uh, Walmart, picked up one of your favorites. What? Morbius. Morbius fucking rules that movie. Uh, I don't want to use hyperbole. It's okay. <laughs> it was. Right. Uh, have you watched it? It's okay. No, no. no. Well, I haven't yet. Uh, it's, we were just there. Well, I bought that. I bought the Elvis movie because I I love. I grew up loving Elvis. There's an. I think Isn't another Morbius. Morbius is okay. You won't hate it. I'm telling you right now, you won't hate it. It's not. That movie got way overhyped just being like this terrible like once in a generation awful movie because it's not that bad it's not good like i'll never watch it again like i don't know it's only an hour and a half it's fine it's fucking it's fine i mean adam van says that black panther 2 sucks and i watched it last night like i liked it it's not probably like as action-packed as the first one because they put a lot more real shit in there but i've only seen in the marvel universe morbius and the two guardians movies because batista's in them time ant-man was on in a place i was at but i don't really count it i didn't pay attention but that looks like shit it looked bad so are you gonna watch the uh guardians tv show he's does in it right yeah yeah i'll watch it okay yeah it's the uh i don't know if it's one episode or multiple ones but it's, it should be coming out soon for like christmas oh tv shows i watch moon Knight, but i like moon Knight. moon Knight. that was a that was fun series not my favorite of the right. of the disney plus shows uh miss marvel was my favorite but i'm also like i don't want to say weird i always love learning about other cultures especially like other religions because yeah i like i want to know how other people see the world i don't necessarily want to like change my views my religion but it's just like what, what's what's your version of this let me let me learn so when they had a little bit of that in there I, th- I thought that was really cool um so we have a uh, hell on earth we do have hell on earth oh so uh this is wrestling cheers i'm justin Mad. <laughs> <laughs> do, you me, do you want me to hit a button yeah t- um... <laughs> I don't know, do I hit a cesspool button or do I hit the, the next segment button that I have? Dun, 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 dun. You love that one, don't you? Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I do have two cesspool buttons on here. Which one's my favorite? I think it's... This, the one? I think it's this one. You may call me cesspool. Mm. 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 Is it that one or is it this one? Dive into the cesspool. No, I like the other one. Even though that one has Macho Man in it, I like the other one because that wasn't the bit that year of like saying toilet first. Toilet. So when I hear that, I hear that one. I think toilet. So yeah, well, uh, we're gonna like preview this, and uh, here's the fun part. Uh, me and Dad talked about this beforehand. Uh, he doesn't necessarily know any of the matches. He said, "I don't know a lot of them. I know." Eric Stevens is wrestling Josh Bishop for sure, though. Yep. And you know the members only match. Yes. Other than that, you know nothing. So let's uh, let's get into these matches. Let's start off with the intense title match. Derek Dillinger versus who do you think his opponent is? Kaplan. Kaplan is one of the <laughs> opponents. Who's the other opponent? It oh, is a. There's another one. Yeah. So that's actually know. pretty good. That's actually okay. We're talking hell on earth. We're talking intense title. Who do you think would fit that other than Kaplan? You know, not on this show. He's on uh, the next show. The same. Okay. So justice. You are correct. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, uh, Dillinger justice Kaplan, man. That's going to be wild. 
I hope they do a lot of dumb shit. I'm going to talk to Derek before this match and see if we can talk him into doing some really stupid shit. I kind of wish a Psycho Clown was in this too. Um, I'm really excited for some unprotected shots to the head and for somebody to do like a CTE chant and then for people to get like out- outraged like, oh, these fucking idiots do CTE chant. I love uh, that exchange that happens anytime Mad Justice takes unprotected shots to the head. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be nuts. I hope they fight all over this place. I don't know if I've ever had an issue with the CET chant. I'm just more or less, when I hear it, I'm like, that's a weird thing to chant. Well, it's the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's inevitable. And it's like, it's like nothing against it, but when you hear the chant, it's like, wow, that, that, I never thought I'd hear that. Uh, it's like, it's honestly, it's the wrestling equivalent of like, somebody fouled around Elon Musk when he was trying to buy Twitter. They're like, bad decision. Bad decision. <laughs> That's something that should have happened. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, man. Also, it's not my brain. I've always stuck to this rule, man. Like, I don't wrestle. I'm not going to tell a wrestler what's safe and what isn't. I have no idea. I'm just some fucking idiot that watches this shit. And also, it's, I don't know. It's not my brain. It's not, I'm going to tell people what to do with their brain. She's just destroying mine with drugs. So, like, <laughs> Doesn't it, that kind of go with the whole thing of, like, and I've, I've, this has been, like, a conversation I think on Pod and Damon, especially wrestling Twitter, of like not telling wrestlers how to wrestle type thing. Yeah, it's not my job. I don't have that same job as them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume they know how to do their job better than I would know how to do their job. It's, it's like the same. Like I got a guy come to fix my furnace tomorrow. I'm gonna trust uh, the knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, because like I, I don't know how to fix it, so I'm gonna take his word on it. So I don't know. If Matt Joseph thinks it's safe enough to take. Uh, shots to the head like that. That's uh, that's him. You can do that. I don't know. Like science and doctors will tell you you're wrong. <laughs> so I would, if I were you, I'd listen to them. But I don't know. It's a choice. Do what you want, brother. I think it's cool when it happens. I'm like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm an animal. Uh, <laughs> like, I fucking love it. I freak out every fucking time he takes an unprotected chair shot. I fucking scream and I jump up and down. And it's the it's a fucking primal instinct. I think it's dope. I like it a lot. I get a headache when it happens. But <laughs> but it's more of like feeling that type of pain or you're yeah. just like, oh, and just I get that kind of like, I don't know, would you call that sympathy pain? I guess so. Yeah, cause that, that's that's what I think of where just my head hurts just thinking about because we've all hit our head fucking hard one way or another. Yeah. So you, I just think about that. And uh, but yeah, well, it, I mean, yeah, it, it definitely comes. Favorite things for sure. It definitely comes down like if that's what you want to do. That's what you want to fucking do. Yeah. I like watching it. I really do. I'm a ghoul. I'm a monster. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoy it. And they're like, whoa, he's going to regret that in the future. And it's like, what fucking future? Like, <laughs> a week ago, it was like 85 out. <laughs> it's not a future. <laughs> so the boy take his unprotected chair shots, all right? By the time people hear this, that'll be about close to closer to two weeks ago. <laughs> that is something I think of. Like, actually, it was like this Thursday at work. This past Thursday, I would tell people like, yeah, remember last Thursday when it was all nice out? Now it's fucking cold. Crazy. Yeah, man. Literally uh, on Friday, because I, I knew temperatures were going down that Saturday. And like when that Friday it rained, I was like, oh, like that's the, that was the last of our good weather on Thursday. I thought like we'd have something on Friday. No, we have fucking rain all day. So like now like good weather's gone. We're now in the cold shit. But yeah, this match is going to be fucking insane. Yeah, this is a good... uh it's a good get for us. I like this a lot. Is Fonzie going to be there? He's not on the graphic, but... Oh, no. But most of the time he is. I know he wasn't at Akron. Yeah. But that wasn't just uh, Justice. So it was more second gear crew. So kind of understand. But be, if it's fucking Matt Justice, you want just regular him. Yeah, I, w- I would say Fonzie's going to be there. And of course, because like, she's not on the flyer either, but or on the match graphic, but Ziggy's going to be there too. So you got here, you got a lot going on with Justice and Derek, like the history that they had last year at around this time. You have Kaplan and Derek. You know, that was the uh, final two for the, the Fonzie tournament. And I'm pretty sure we've seen Justice and Kaplan go at each other. This is, yeah, this is going to be fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah, they got their three craziest people and put them all in one match, so, so I'm excited about that. Who do you got for this one? Eric. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go Derek too. This is uh, this is gonna be his time to shine. And uh, who who Kaplan all needs a little buddy? Oh my God, Kaplan needs a little buddy. But remember, <laughs> remember that one WrestleMania when it was Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys, and they all had a little buddy come out. Yeah. So Derek has Ziggy. Matt Justice has Bill Fonz, and Kaplan needs a little buddy. He's a little guy with him. What if what if we got like Midget Kaplan? No, oh, it's too long. Those. I want like he needs a little guy with him. He needs like no. The reason Caleb. why the, <laughs> the, Caleb from <laughs> Observational Vanna needs to be Kaplan's little guy. The reason why I say that is just like imagine Midget Kaplan. I refuse to. <laughs> um, he needs a little guy, and it needs to be Caleb. Um. Imagine Kaplan with Caleb. Oh my god, I'm gonna text Albert this right now. I think I'm a genius. This is such a good idea. Why not? Uh, why not Kaplan and Alberti? Not, there's not little guy energy with Alberti. He needs a little guy. Yeah, but you're not gonna debut him that way. Like, what other like people that have debuted in AIW could actually be that? Um, I don't. Oh, it should be Caleb though. Okay, let me. I can hold your record to send audio. All right. Come on, I'm too high. No problem. <laughs> He's part of the company now. Why not Pat? Okay, Albert, listen. So, um, Kaplan's in that three-way match, right? Eric has Ziggy, and Mad Justice has Fonzie. So, like, Kaplan needs to also have a little guy, just a little buddy with him. I think Caleb's perfect. You can imagine them together. It's very funny. Caleb should be Kaplan's little guy. There you go. All right. You'll have to tell us what he responds back with. I'll let you know. Yeah, man, that's so good. Oh, <laughs> it sucks that won't happen. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, like, if not Caleb, like, who would that be? There's no one funnier than that choice. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. the problem. <laughs> because, that like... That is such weird, like... Because, listen, man, most odd couple tag teams would be, like, Kaplan wouldn't want to hang out or, like, team with Caleb, right? Mm-hmm. Like, Kaplan would definitely would. <laughs> and that would be great. Like, just imagine vignettes with those two just driving to a place. It would be so good. What about the Weirdster? It's a great little guy. Yeah. That's also another real little... It's not as funny for sure, but it is a great little guy. That's a good choice. Because then you got the idea of Ziggy, Al- Bill Alfonso, and the Weirdster. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, 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 would, that would be an interesting one. The Weirdster's not announced on a match. He could be a little guy in a corner for sure. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. Isaiah. Oh shit. Okay, I'll say Isaiah Broner's in the match because I got to give you. A, dope, I got to get. Okay. I got to. I got to give you somebody. I can't just be like guess the next match. Who do you think Isaiah Broner's <laughs> opponent is? Don't say Caleb. No, it's I'm trying to think of who's is it Cardona. No. I'm gonna keep guessing Cardona until I have. <laughs> I have no idea who. Um, Watch when when we get to the Cardona match, I'm probably yeah. purposely not going to give you Cardona. Yeah. Just as, or I give you Cardona. I'm just like, what's the? Yeah. What do you think his opponent is? And you'd be like, ah, nah. Or yeah, I'll 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 give you his opponent and be like, guess who the uh, who he's facing, and that'll be the one you're like, ah, I can't be Cardona, and it'll be um, Cardona. Who'd you say? Um, you are correct. Ooh, that'll be fucking good. Are you cheating? Oh, <laughs> no, I am not. Because, <laughs> well, as of this recording, this hasn't technically been announced, but it was on Patreon. But yeah, it's uh, Dom versus Broner. All right. That'll be fun. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm very excited for that. Fuck, where do you go here with Broner? Like, Broner beats everyone. What do you mean? That's where you go with Broner. So you say, you say Broner is going to beat Dom? Yeah, Broner beats everybody. That's how I would do things. Is Broner beats everybody until he gets a title match against JB. <laughs> He beats everybody, but then, like, he goes up against Mikey out of nowhere. He beats Mikey. Broner beats everybody. Whoa. Broner lose. Did, did you and Mikey get in a fight? Because, like, you, you have not been behind no. Mikey and the Bitcoin boys like you used to be. No. Like, well, what was the tweet that I see? Something about, like, asking for tag teams, and you're like, oh, violence is forever. And I'm like, what, what about Bitcoin? Um, No love for, for your boys? Yeah, no, yeah, Broner would be Mikey. Yeah, Broner beats everybody. That's how I would do things is Broner wins. Broner versus Boogeyman. Broner wins. I wouldn't let Broner lose. I'd be like, Broner beat everybody until he gets a title shot. Broner versus your best friend, Liv Morgan. Yeah, Broner, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think we're on the collision course of Broner and Bishop. 
but for sure they're but i you, i think the great thing is we don't know how it could be yeah. gauntlet it could be jaylet it could be you know he just earns a title shot but whenever that is it's gonna be a great fucking match yeah, dude, it's good wrestling booking, man. Just two guys win all the time, and then they're gonna face each other for the belt. And we're gonna see who wins between the two guys that win all the time. Awesome. And Isaiah Broner doesn't have to say fuck a lot in a promo. Could though. I'd be honest with it. Okay, with that lesson. I'm not anti MJF saying fuck all the time. I just don't think it's as cool as everybody else does. I don't know. I feel like I'm a little desensitized from the word to the point it's of like I much. I watch that promo, but I. I wasn't paying attention how many times he said fuck. I just, there were times that I got some references that weren't like trying to be like, oh, look, I got that through that reference. And like, he just says something and moves on because he, was it just me? He kind of referenced the pipe bomb promo. Yeah, kind of. He referenced CM Punk uh, shit a lot. Yeah, actually. (laughs) And it wasn't just like, oh, like as a dig, he's just saying. And then obviously when you end your promo with a fucking Jim Cornette line, but yeah, like, yeah, I just I caught like stuff like that. Yeah. Bruno and Dom, that'll be a fun one. I definitely hope this isn't one of those matches that like gets turned into like a nether match to like where this match doesn't necessarily have a finish. It's gonna turn like Dom and uh Broner versus a tag team or something. I don't know. Yeah, I w- I wanna see where we go with this. So yeah, we're just gonna both agree Broner. Yeah, they're gonna hit each other hard. I like that that's the best kind of wrestling is like when just like the last match when you know people are gonna get legitimately hurt doing it. I like it a lot. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. All right, let's go with the Bitcoin boys. They're uh, they're in this next matchup, and who do you think their opponents are? Um, I know PME's match, so no, it's not. Um, so are they facing like one of the newer student tag teams? Maybe I haven't learned. This is gonna be bad. I haven't learned many of their names yet. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, the oh. new the newer students are in a different match. Those are that's going to be a fun one because they're so in a, I'll they're just in a call scramble right now because I won't be able to tell you any of their names. They're all in a scramble, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, against. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good tradition. The student scramble, I'm a big fan of. Okay, right, that'll be fun. But um, with that match, there are two more AIW regulars in that match. So, but they're the a re- tag team. No, no, no. nine to five. No, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, but there there are no no no. I'm talking about uh. The student match for later. Oh, okay. it, it's it's the four in the scramble plus two veterans in the IW for the scramble. So that, but we'll we'll move on to this. We're, we're technically, which this could give it away, they are going up against two veterans. Who the fuck is in a tag team that's a vet? Is it Jollyville? No. Huh. I got nothing then. Who is it, dude? You're gonna kick yourself because you're gonna be like, "Fuck!" I wasn't thinking about them. Euthanasia. Oh, hey, yeah. I forgot Matt came back. <laughs> So yeah, the yeah, veterans. That'd be fun. Shouldn't have, they be feud with? Aren't they feud with PME? <laughs> yeah, but you already know PME's match, so they're they're both. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm confused. I mean, it'll be fun no matter what. Maybe we'll build to that later. But I thought that the whole thing was like Josh Prohibition feuding with like PME. Maybe that's December show. Mm. Maybe yeah. Because I think maybe the idea that that's supposed to be something at the Odeon. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Bitcoin Boys and Ethanation, that'll be a lot of fucking fun. Hopefully the Duke can stay out of it. Um, just let these guys go at it, and uh, Mikey wins. What about Eric? Eric, by proxy, will also win. How <laughs> tag team matches work. It'll be cool for him, too. See, Mikey's your favorite. Eric's yeah. my favorite. Well, that's because I have taste. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. I didn't say it was good. <laughs> it exists, though. Yeah, so um, I'm a I'm a huge fan of Euthanasia. Maybe it's because yeah. like they were they were around when I first started watching AIW. Like literally, I think my second AIW show they reformed in AIW. So like always, always about that with those two. And they were in that game I had. They're in the game that I have. The poster of that game that I have, and the DVD that has the same cover as that game that I have, and they have the DVD too fucking video game that's really cool <sighs> not even making jokes that's that's gotta be a really cool feeling like i don't think anybody can tell you shit anymore after that yeah but you know how pu- help put that game together new jack <laughs> <laughs> you no know, your favorite uh independent wrestling commentator evan gill yeah evan gill fucking rules i thought you were gonna say somebody else 
Uh, who? Who's an independent wrestling commentator that you really don't like? Oh, uh, that I don't like? Yeah. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna say Veda. Oh, yeah, Veda's bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, Veda's not good at commentary. Uh, but Kevin Gill, yeah, people get mad I say Kevin Gill is good, but just in case they don't know me, I watch like two GCW shows a year, so like, <laughs> you know, I don't know, he doesn't really bother me. I don't, yeah, I don't get the, the shit with him. I, I don't mind him, but then again, I don't watch GCW. Yeah, that's what, exactly, yeah, that's probably why we don't mind him. Like, and that, I see him like, so, Janela Spring Break, and then like, the War Game show, I'll check out. And like, other than that, like, yeah, you can see Kevin Gill do commentary twice a year, it's fine, like, he's, he's fine, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, but, but isn't he on Circle Six now? Probably. But I th- I thought I had seen something. When yeah, every, everybody he's on Circle Six. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I I know that part, but I thought I seen something right around people were wondering his status, where it was announced that like Kevin Gill signed a contract too. But I don't. Huh. It's one of those things. Is like I don't follow it closely. I probably saw maybe a screenshot of something, or I don't I don't fucking know. But I'm sure like. They really stuck it to Brett. Now KG won't fly himself out to GCW shows anymore. Yeah, he's really, he really showed him, guys. <laughs> I mean, KG. Oh, no, what will Brett do? Losing zero dollars from this. <laughs> I mean, KG did move to New York. Ugh, all time bad idea. That's Alice in Danger moving to Orlando. Uh, bad timing. Shouldn't have done that. But I love, well, as Ricky said, Circle Six is a national touring brand, so you can be based on anywhere. It's fine. They got they got Pizza Hut. They got Pizza Hut sometimes. That's cool. Wrestled the Big Show once. Uh, what pizza will be served at PVD Pro? Um. See, everybody talks about matches and everything for PVD Pro. I'm I'm getting down yeah. to like a real business. What pizza smoke is that catering? Jays. We'll get Smoke and Jays. I don't even think Smoke and Jays makes pizza. So you're you're we'll, throwing. You're, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Ooh, Brock, you hear that? Smoking Jay's pizza. Like, Brock, we'll talk. I got ideas for pizzas. <laughs> I I worked in the industry for a while. Like, I got ideas. We'll talk. We'll talk, pal. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, what match is this? Bitcoin Twin boys. boys. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome, dude. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Oh, Mikey, do a bounce clutch. There's no defense <laughs> against it. Instant win. What if Eric does it? Eric, you don't know how to do a Ganske clutch. <laughs> don't attempt it. It has to be learned. Uh, you know, can't, it's not like a fucking sharpshooter. You just fucking go around doing it willy nilly. Uh, you do it wrong. Whew, d- disaster for you and your opponent. Um, so, yeah, just don't try it. Mikey's got it under control. What if the Duke does it? No fucking chance. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fucking chance in the world. I fucking hate him for being razor sharp. I'm still mad. <laughs> Fuck him, dude. You know, it was on at Hell on Earth a number of years ago where Josh Bishop, you know, captured the absolute title. A, yeah. A, a younger, young Ed is really excited ringside. Yep. And then Justice comes out and cashes in and you just watch Deflated it's head. Stupid. Yep. I'm not happy. And my now wife I, said, you smell like weed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> of course I do. Um, and that wasn't a complaint. That was not a complaint. Maybe I'll have a different reaction if somebody wins the uh, absolute title uh, this time. That's We'll talk about that later. And then Matt Justice comes out and cashes in. He's terrible. For no reason, he just has. He's just allowed to do that hell on earth. It's like, yeah, I did, did it once before. Just gonna do it again. He's like, yeah, I just wanted to see if anyone would tell me I couldn't. That's Mancer. When was the last time we seen Mancer? Bro, it's been a minute. I know we've seen him sooner than I last. I can last like remember him because I want to say it was like one of the return shows. But I swear we've seen him since then. I just can't remember. Somebody will tell us for sure. Uh, what's up, Mancer? So uh, you're going Bitcoin? Yeah, of course, yeah. Unless Bitcoin goes against uh, Isaiah Broner. Isaiah Broner, yep. Then no one, no one beats Isaiah Broner. Uh, do I go? Okay, I'm going to go with uh, Bitcoin. Let's move on to the next one. This one we're going to go with Jocelyn Navarro and who is her opponent? <laughs> Dude, I'm going to say it as a joke, but I swear to God, if it is, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Is it Katie Arquette? It is. 
What? No. <laughs> Why? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. No, Thank it's not. God. I'm joking. I th- I thought you were gonna actually say it first, Shaza McKenzie. No, which is I not. Just... It's not Shaza McKenzie. It's not. Is it Zig? No. Uh, if you who were pay- is left, <laughs> if you if you were paying attention, which it wasn't. Uh, I think it was before we started. I said that there were two people that they were bringing in. One's Cardona. Oh, TNA or Impact Wrestling Superstar Masha Slamovich. Yes. Yeah, that'll be fun. This will be my first time seeing her live, so I'm I'm excited. Yeah, I haven't seen her live. I've only seen her every Thursday on Impact Wrestling. For the last two weeks. No, it's been since Bound for Glory. I've watched every Impact since Bound for Glory, and it's an okay show. (laughs) How many Impacts have been since Bound for Glory? I thought we were at two. Nah, we're like five or six. Five or six, okay. It's weird to think that this that company was once like somewhat competition to WWE. I don't want to say competition, but it was like that. Like when people are like, "Oh, I don't want to." A million people used to watch that every week. Yeah, yeah, that's wild to think about. <laughs> and like, what has become? But I, I don't. Yeah. I don't blame the company now. I feel like that's like a company that went on just like this road, long road of bad decisions, and now just people look at those that long road of bad decisions and still think of it as that. If I were to describe yeah. it. To, I mean, it's kind of gone full circle. They're just kind of back where they started. They're like a big indie at this point. Yeah. If yeah. I were to describe them uh, in two words, they would be Cleveland Browns. Uh-huh. And that's not a joke. That's I've... not true because I enjoy watching Impact. <laughs> <laughs> they do do silly shit, though. Like this week, uh, their main event was like Sammy Callahan versus Eric Young. <laughs> it's like, who's this for? <laughs> it's just like uh, their pay-per-view Friday. I watched that. The first match was Bully Ray versus Moose in a tables match. And I was like, well, I can skip this right off the bat. So there we go. You just watch the rest of the show after this. So I give them that. They're just putting all the bad shit uh, together. And then I don't have to watch those segments. Yeah. But I, Masha Stamovich was very good on that show. She wrestled with Jordan Grace. It was very good. Yeah. Uh, probably easy one of the... Oh, I, I never want to say a particular verbiage for this, but so I got to make sure I avoid it. But like, she's the one of the fastest rising... Independent wrestlers, like uh, female? Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, over the past handful of years, like, that was a name that I heard of a lot. And now you're... She's, yeah, I was gonna say. She got to the point now, obviously, where she, you know, she's an impact, so that's, like... Yeah. That's next level. So I'm saying, like, I think, like, within, like, a year, like, she went from, like, a, she's got to, to be a bigger name on the indies, and yeah, get put to an impact. Yeah. Which is, like, one of the bigger companies. They got TV. Now, the question is, do you think Masa Slamovich is her real name? Yes, <laughs> that's why she had to be a wrestler. <laughs> she had a choice. You know the old the old country uh, Slamoviches go back you know generations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, all wrestlers doing their choice. <laughs> Jocelyn will win though. What's that? Jocelyn wins. Yeah, like she doesn't lose a lot in AEW. Like nah, and it's cool to bring in somebody in that can wrestle. Mm-hmm. Like I always like to see. Uh, it's like, what, I made Leon the one time? It's like, come on. Jocelyn, like, it made it work. It was a really good match. But, like, that wasn't good because, like, made Leon is good. <laughs> and then fucking Shaza before that. Jesus. This would be awesome. I'm stoked. Mandy Leon was a nicer person than I thought she would be. And she's they have to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Gained nothing from it. I, I just want to know, why, did, why were people thinking that she's married to... She is dating Delirious. I really? Okay, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever the Bully Ray story? No. Dude, dude ROH is being mean to Mandy Leon and Velvet Sky and Bully Ray pulled him inside uh, the office, the locker room, and told him, you're being mean and disrespectful. Get back out there and be a fan. <laughs> I thought he told that to a fan. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. A fan oh, being mean oh to yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. That dude fucking sucks. <laughs> Brother Ray Deadly. Brother Ray Deadly versus Josh Alexander. Big feud and impact right now. <laughs> oh, I swear to God, if Josh Alexander doesn't win that one, I'm. I'm interested, uh, honestly, to see what he can do with a like a in his fifties bully Ray like that from like a that'll be a weird perverse thing to say like I because I I want to see how good Josh it'll tell me how really good Josh Alexander is it's like I don't know Billy Ray's unwatchable at this point he should be in the NWA like full time <laughs> yeah 
They don't give a fuck over there. You should go there. I think more. What I mean is, I think more wrestlers should be on shows I don't watch, like like Two Hundred Five Live. I can bring it back, Paul. I'll watch. I'll talk about. I'll say nice things about you on Twitter, Paul. I was about to say if if, back. if he brings back Two Hundred Five Live, would like you just change your feeling towards That's Triple H? Or yes. Or would you? Or would you? Would you do this? Because I think this is more you. You would give him a another chocolate bunny for a year. And say once, whatever you wanted me to say to bring back Two Hundred Five Live. <laughs> We'll completely sell out to get that brand back. That shit ruled. Every wrestling show should be one hour. Next thing you would tell me that there's perfect amount of wrestling. Next thing you'll tell me there was like a NXT UK or something. NXT UK was fucking really good too. See, I don't believe that was real. It was definitely real. Uh, I watched it. Uh, Gunther was there. <laughs> if if it was real, where's it at now? Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's where, that's that's where all the brands go when they die. They go to heaven. Do you think uh, NXT UK ran a, ran into a WWE ECW up there? Well, I think that was Chris Benoit. Oh, we don't talk about that. We on the established show. the rules of wrestling heaven are more lax. <laughs> what's well, what, like who gets it and who doesn't? What's yeah? I thought wait a minute. I thought he was in wrestling hell. Oh, he's in heaven. Jonah decided he was in wrestling heaven. <laughs> Yeah, I, but I thought I thought Jesse said that he was in wrestling. Uh, Brother, all those episodes are scrubbed from history. <laughs> I don't even think they're on Spotify anymore. This is I don't know if I've ever put this out on Twitter. How many listeners of Pod Van Dam do you think <laughs> listened back then to like that are still around? Um, they're still around. I don't know. I could tell you back then we're getting about one fifty downloads a week. I think they're all still around. <laughs> I mean, you got me, you got Moy Boy. You know who hasn't, um, like, mentioned us on Twitter in years? Uh, that was a Blue Ray Mysterio, Blue Mysterio guy. You know who I'm talking about? His Vague. name is like Henry. He's very positive and nice. He's a very great boy. Vaguely. He used to tweet us all the time, and then he stopped. And I think he liked the show and then found out that I am not a positive, nice boy <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> I think I might, you might be turned off by like uh, who I am. <laughs> I, I think so. I don't know if he listens anymore. I think the fun thing for me was when I was first listening. Do you know how many times I would like fast forward impressions? Like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. then like the ironic thing was like later on, I started listening to Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. And almost like those episodes of Pod Van Dam like warmed me up to it to the point of like I could probably go back and listen to those episodes, you know, if I had access to them, and yeah. and probably like enjoy them more. Are they Sarah do impressions? Oh yeah. Well, huh. they, that and they have like characters. Okay. Like they have, you know, they have like one Unky Rick, which is supposed to be Ric Flair. I understand. They have. I listen, I listen to comedy Bang Bang. I get. Yeah. I get characters and bits. My favorite one, uh, they actually have a character that's supposed to be the exact same one from old uh, Christian VHS tapes of um, Gerbert. Gerbert, yes! Yeah, that's one that they've revived because Sarah, she grew up in like a pretty big Christian household. So yeah, I I love the every and all reference to, Didn't to Gerbert. Gerbert look um, like fucking delicious. <laughs> I was gonna say like an orange. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he looked like he should be shelling some like some orange candy. Like I want to bite his fucking head. Yeah, Herbert always seemed like he should be shelling some fucking orange drink or something. Yeah, dude. Herbert looks too delicious a puppet to just be in Christian videos. <laughs> he <laughs> needs to be making money for something. They actually made a uh, Gerbert pins, and I made sure I bought one. <laughs> like managing to turn that character into like a wrestling fan kind of is pretty funny. It was one of those things like if you get, you get. And also they kind of like throw out. Cause like the ways Sarah does the voice, uh, it does kind of sound like Pat from it's Pat. <laughs> and I think the week after they debuted the character, there was like this thing of like Pat and Gerbert talking to each other. Did they do veggie tales ever. I have nothing I know of. Veggie tales. Uh, by the time like Veggie Tales was a thing, I was in like high school. 
I had we had like one tape of my sister watching. It was Rag Shack and Benny. That's about all I remember of Veggie Tales. It's just that one tape about uh, the Chocolate Bunny Idol. One day we'll start our Christian podcast. Good morning, George. How are you? And that's like the opening song on it. You find out that this chocolate bunny factory just isn't a great place to work. But everybody everybody starts off with a chocolate bunny, and then you take a bite. Oh, no, that's a different chocolate bunny. And yep, and then all of a sudden your chocolate bunny is gone, and it won't be back until you bring back 205 Live. <laughs> I think Jocelyn will win. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. Let's move on to the next one. All right, this one, I'm going to give you Shaw Mason. Who do you think <laughs> Shaw Mason's dude, opponent is? Dude, he wrestles all the time. What's his name? I don't know his name is the thing. The one that wears cop colored gear. <laughs> the cop. Is he, yeah, him. Cisco Silver. Yeah. Yeah. Um we we saw these two this is their third, I think third, yeah, third match. But the match in Akron was dope. Yeah. The I thought the match in the Winchester was better. Okay. Uh, maybe it's because like I didn't know what to expect from Cisco, because I hadn't really seen him in a little while, and also this was like a different version of him. So it's like okay. Did he wrestle before? Oh yeah. What? <laughs> I thought he was a student. Uh I think he goes now he's kinda like Jocelyn. Okay. Yeah. He's he's wrestled a few other like local places. Yeah, I feel you. Alright. Yeah, him and Sean that match at Akron was dope. I uh hope they like dive out do a dive out of the crowd. That's been so long ago I don't fucking remember. <laughs> that was like a yeah. month ago. Good shit. Yeah, I'll watch that match again. That'll be fun. Get get a white claw and just enjoy it. Good time. I've said it before. I think Sean Mason is, you know, one of my favorite uh, wrestlers from the new class. Like I, yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. I would not be surprised if he wins debut of the year. Like that is something that I'm, I have to start preparing soon of the uh, 2022 Wrestling Cheers Awards of, you know, uh, nominations and all that shit. Like it'll probably. I think I'll probably get that going around the time of the last AIW show for the year so I can have everything ready. But yeah, that's, uh, if I'm, if I'm putting my vote down, it's going to be Shaw Mason debut of the year. I think he should do roids. <laughs> I think he should get fucking dummy huge. And he's, yeah, he's awesome. Like I, he just needs to get like dummy big now. Like Kurt, Ang- I just want him to be Kurt Angle. Mostly. <laughs> what about, what should he do? Ketamine? No, Kurt Angle did perks anyway. He was that was perk angle. Uh, but no, yeah, I just, I just look at that kid and I remember him doing a dive and I'm just like, yeah, dude, that's some Kurt Angle shit to do like really good mat wrestling and like to make that your gimmick is like I'm an amateur wrestler, but then still do shit like moon salts for some reason. Shit rules. What did you think of uh, Rapper Shaw? I uh, thought it was too good, and I worried for him that that might be a thing that he has to do in the future. Hopefully not. Better than that, but he did really well at it. You're afraid he's going to become AIW's John Cena? Yeah, absolutely I am, yeah, because he's that good at it, and I don't want that for him. Uh, that would suck. That would be shitty. It would be shitty to become the John Cena of AIW. To become the white rapper gimmick in <laughs> 2022 would be shitty, yes. He should just keep doing what he's doing. <laughs> he's really good. There's a lot of good white rappers out there, you know. You weren't with Cleveland MGK? No, MGK is bad. He's bad at music. He's bad at life. He's bad at everything he's ever attempted. He's a fucking loser. He's a failure. Uh, he's convinced people that he... Does he have a coffee place now? Fuck, he's an embarrassment. MGK really is an embarrassment, and I hate that, like, that's the representation of, like, the most famous person from, like, Northeast Ohio. That sucks, because MGK is fucking awful. So what you're telling me is you didn't like his new album. I would never listen to that fucking piece of shit. Never in a million years would I listen to an MGK album. Terrible. I'll, Terrible. I'll openly admit that I liked earlier MGK, like when he first started uh, showing up on I, the scene. <laughs> Obviously, you, you wouldn't. I thought he's bad since day one. Yeah, I've never heard anything he's ever done that I thought was anything with Mary. I And I also think... He's the cringiest fucking human being. The world. Like, he's embarrassing. Like, he he makes me embarrassed that we're from the same state. Like, I, I think he's embarrassing. <laughs> Him going from rap to pop punk or whatever, like, I think I heard someone try to say, like, oh, no, he, he's always made this type of music. I'm like, shut the fuck up. No, he hasn't. Like, I'm he from- shouldn't make any. He's but he was just as bad at pop punk as he was at rap. He's bad at everything. He's 
Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even. Oh, evil MGK super fans we used to argue with me on Twitter a lot, and it would just take everything in me to not make fun of these people when they're like, MGK's music saved my life. Because, like, in essence, it is good that you're still alive, but I don't know that I would tell people if that's what <laughs> helped me. He's awful. I have a cousin that's like obsessed with MGK, and I hate it. He's just the worst. I mean, yeah, he's always been bad. He's always, always, always been bad. Um, he has, like, strong, um, fuzzy cookie monster pajama pants energy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're telling me his Walmart energy. He gives energy. off that vibe, and his fans give off that vibe, and I don't like any of it. I don't, <laughs> I don't like him or his fans. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I liked him early on, then, like, when he first had the major album, like that was you know, okay. Like some of the songs, I don't think I ever listened to the full Doesn't thing. Doesn't Bishop love MGK? <laughs> I think so. I think so. He's going to hate this episode. <laughs> but, but him switching to pop punk, I'm like, ah, uh, this just. MG, it's embarrassing. He was like fucking in his mid thirties, wasn't he? Like too old for this shit. Oh my God. I hate him. <laughs> yeah. So. It's like he's a. Uh, my tongue black it's like you're almost 40 <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> oh, he's the most famous person from this state it fucking sucks is he the most famous person from this state yes yes unless you're counting athletes and then it's lebron and that's it those are the only two <laughs> that's it yeah like yeah lebron's number one hands down maybe i think lebron has more worldwide appeal Let's hope so. <laughs> MGK isn't the thing that's released on the rest of the world. <laughs> they've they've made movies starring LeBron. Have they made a movie starring and word starring MGK? If they do, what the fuck? Who would <laughs> doing what? If if they ever make that movie, someone let me know. If they so I can avoid movie, it like it a has motherfucker. To be all fucking puppets. <laughs> the only way to make an MGK biopic. Everyone is a fucking puppet in it. And that's it. Pu- puppet MGK? Yeah, dude, that's it. And it would still be bad, but, like, no real person can play. MGK is not a real person. He's, like, a fucking... Like, I, it's like you couldn't parody MGK. He's already a parody. <laughs> what if, what if uh, puppet MGK meets puppet MDK? That'd be dope. I'd, put, I'd let them take, if they wanted them to do puppet MGK biopic, I'd let them use Nick Puppet Games for sure. They would give, I would give them a blessing. But yeah, for sure, there's no way you could do an MGK biopic that isn't like puppets, because he's not real. <laughs> he's the uh, NXT UK of Pop Punk. But unfortunately, very famous. <laughs> it would have to be, he's not a real person. You can't make a biopic of that man, because it's a parody. So like, just do it with puppets. Do you think uh, Sean Mason should be a puppet? No, Sean Mason should be Kurt Angle. I said that. <laughs> okay, what about Cisco Silver? I don't. What? What about him? <laughs> I've only seen him wrestle Sean Mason. I think. <laughs> All right, I like this match. It's pretty good every time. It's it's the the low bar for this is pretty good. We're like, I don't know. They've worked each other enough now. They're probably yeah. This will probably be the best one out of like all their matches that they've had against each other. All right, who do you got? Uh, Sean Mason. Yeah, give me Shaw Mason, too. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. All right, student scramble time. Can you name any of the four students? any of their names. The hard way kid? Uh, yes, Sam Holloway's in it. The softball kid? <laughs> Austin James, yes. The karate kid? <laughs> Tyson Riggs, yes. The one that played the drunk guy on Halloween? Vic Vice, yes. That's it. I don't know anybody else. Okay. Good guesses. Okay. So, so you got all them. I mean, that's the four that was in there. Now, okay. two AIW regulars, but I will say newer, debuted within the past Come on. five. No. Fuck that. Okay. Uh, debuted within the past five years. Both. Uh, one went through the AIW school, the other one did not. Dr. Dan. <laughs> um. <laughs> Should I censor that? <laughs> No, <laughs> he should come back. Uh, bring him back. Um, this might be the, like the hardest one. Carson. No, no, Brian Carson. Jackson Stone? Is he in this? Nope, no Jackson Stone. I got nothing then. Riley Rose? Oh, okay, Riley. Dope, dope. He's a good scramble guy. Who else? Stace. Yes. 
Hell yeah. Chase is a great scramble. Riley, this is going to be good. A soon scramble with these two in it. This will be good shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm always looking forward to a Chase Oliver match. Riley Rose is someone who's been trying to make a better impression over the last year and a half. And then you got four students, which I like seeing all four of them grow. Um, I've always said like Sam's my second favorite student behind uh, Shaw Mason. And I really do like Tyson Riggs as well. I feel like it's the karate one, right? Yes. He, I like him. Uh, him. I, I can't say much of him in the ring, but like him coming out, he has a certain presence to him. Like he, he's already figured a lot of that stuff out and it works. So yeah, not, I don't know what else to say about this one. Yeah, no, you got two experienced scramble guys in there and the student scrambles are always really fun. Every time, every time they hit every single time. Um, so yeah, but chase wins. Yeah, there's no way that anybody else wins. This is yeah, Chase is no chance. Chase is a scramble god. So, yep, scramble title would be cool. Just saying. All right, uh, Chase, uh, no pressure. Let's move on to the next one. Got to fucking win this. Raw looks stupid. I just ranted about MGK for like ten <laughs> minutes. People already don't like me. All right, you can't make me look dumb and unlikable. All right, you already know this match: PME versus uh, members only. With a, a new match graphic, too. I mean, a new yeah. uh, promo uh, with the Pot of Van Dam uh, fanny packs. Yeah, those are dope fanny packs. Where mine a lot. Um, it's going to be fun. like these teams a lot, uh, except PME are bastard men. So <laughs> I hope only the worst for them. Am, am I a bad editor for not wearing my Pod Van Dam one a lot? Um, No, you're paid. So <laughs> you can do whatever you want. For me, we're the ones that got to do this shit. You're fine. You make you, you get money. You're fine. <laughs> for me, this is my thing when it comes to fanny packs. If they're the the one pocket, I'll call them like an old school fanny pack. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of those. I like ones with like multiple pockets, and Lots I always pockets. I always get uh the I one that I kind of use as my template of like this is the one I like the the Savage Dash ones that we used to wear a lot. I officially yeah. re- retired mine because the he stopped the brand and everything. So Savage Ass isn't around anymore. And I I just wore that the fuck out. So I've been wearing my Whataburger one, which is like the same thing. There's like a zipper in the front, a main pocket zipper, which is bigger. And then that's like zipper more towards your stomach or abdomen, whatever, where like I kind of use that to keep stuff that like my keys where it's just like, I'm not going to be reaching for my keys regularly, but I'll know they're safe here. And then I put other stuff in the other pocket. So they don't, they don't sound like maracas, but you know, it's that's dope. I was just talking about that the other day. <laughs> that's one of the funniest things I, mean, I think anyone's ever said on our show. How about Red Titus? Like he, he remember that time he said, uh, Oh, I can tell you <laughs> exactly. No, I don't remember shit. The Red Titus said, cause it was so fucking boring. I think I've said it before. I, I said well, that man though. I was editing that thing. And like, I walked away from the computer and I started like rearranging figures on my wall. He, there just, was there wasn't shit to edit, so that was great. But it was just like boring. Yeah, I loved it, dude. He's so boring that he killed the interview segment. I was very happy. I uh, said, "Where were you like week four? <laughs> I'm happy that it was killed because episodes used Why to be like fucking long, like two and a half hour episodes. Now right. we're like an hour and a half is like on the long side now." Dude, just so close. they got those episodes are so fucking long. When when Ugh. I when I get the files and I see like when I throw them all in Audacity and like it doesn't even reach an hour, I'm like, yeah, this is gonna be an episode. That's perfect. Yeah, right. That's the perfect length for a Pod Van Dam is just under an hour. Dude, imagine if Joe didn't call in twenty times. Right, and every episode would be like forty five minutes. Especially the weeks that uh, Dwight didn't call in. Like, man. Anyway, PME. Members only, a rematch of uh, members only's debut match, right? And they almost won, and I think this time they will. We got PME's number right now. They're great. Those are uh, these are great tag teams. Very excited. AIW's they got a spoil of riches. You know what I mean when, when it comes to tag, really good tag teams. Oh god, that's something we've said forever. We're like, there's a lot. Like the tag team division in AIW is fucking great. We have everybody that's on this show. Plus, like, there's still. I mean, there's one tag match that we haven't mentioned, but also like, you know, the fuckets are in there. You st- we also have um, Ringo Loco and Steve Payne. <laughs> I 
I was going to say money shot. I mean, granted, they only had one match, but I I see them eventually coming back. I don't I don't know why you wouldn't bring them back in. Um, there's oh, uh, to infinity and beyond. Mm-hmm. Martini guy and Jerry. <laughs> um, Diamond Joe Leonard and Gavin Loudspeaker. Yeah, Matt Riddle and uh, <laughs> Hot Sauce. Uh, I forgot that that was a tag team. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, do, you, do, but, you ever, do you ever think he calls up Paul and like says that like if you don't book me for the championship, like I'm, I'm gonna pull out from Raw tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, he, he just don't. <laughs> he just goes to work. Um, I th- PME's got a God. They can't win this, right? They can't be members only. Every time they wrestle them, right? Eventually, they're going to pick up that win. Okay, here's how I think it's going to go. I think, depending on obviously how the matches fall, like on the card, I see PME interfering against Euthanasia and and okay. like their, their match with Bitcoin to where Bitcoin's yeah. going to win. Okay. I see Euthanasia potentially returning the favor here. Okay. Dig it. Dig it. Not saying that members only need it, but I feel like PME is going to fuck with euthanasia. We're, we're going to that match is going to be built more. Yeah, because Philly Collins in a, a Marino, they're they're uh, they're bastard men. Mm-hmm. Are we going to get an explanation if they're they're still with Cardona or not? Or, we, I assume they are, right? They're all on the same show together. <laughs> they assume this, they're, they're, it's going to be addressed at least. You would think. You would think. It's not like things in wrestling, like every so once in a while, you know, you just get swept under the rug, you know, like, hey, forget about that. Yeah, but not normally here, you know, especially when everybody's still on the roster. Yeah. I mean, do you think we're going to see Cardona after Hell on Earth? Yeah, my, yeah, he's not going. I don't think he's going anywhere. Like, he can come in anytime. Yeah. He's like part of the roster now. I mean, it wouldn't be a shock. Like, if he's gone six months and then just they book him for a match and they're like, oh, yeah, Matt Cardona. I mean, he's part of AIW now. I mean, what if he goes back to WWE? I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily see it happen either. Yeah, um, <laughs> maybe for like a rumble spot or something. But like, I don't. Yeah, I don't see him signing a contract and going back there full time. You think he's an Andy guy now? So I mean, this is what he does. I honestly think, and this is just like me being a bit of a Cardona fan is, and this is, I would think would be the smart thing is like, if he can't do what he's doing now that makes him a lot of money, like with the podcast and all that kind of shit, like. Yeah, there's no way in hell he's gonna fuck like hand that over and be like, Correct. yeah, you're right. Yep. I'm not gonna do this podcast anymore. That has to be worked into it, and that is, you know, would Triple H or anybody else be fine with that? But I, I no pun intended that I think he has more independent. He's more independent on the independence. Yeah, for sure. But members only and PME members only picking up that win for sure. They're not gonna let me down. I mean, it was last year at this time that uh, members only did say that Power Rangers were, uh, the word they used was mid. Yeah, and they're also hanging out with that dumb piece of shit, Jeff Jarrett, but, <laughs> you know, time heals all wounds. But Jeff Jarrett is really smart. But Jeff Jarrett fucking sucks. You know, he's, and this year alone, you know, WWE, uh, yeah. NWA really or GCW. Conrad made him a meme. He's super lucky that Conrad made him a meme. Ric Flair's last match. Yeah, Conrad made him a meme. <laughs> AEW. And, uh, it's really worked out well for him. So that's good. And Major Bendy's. I like to think that uh, he was still alive. British Bulldog would get a lot of the bookings just based off of I'm fucked, Mr. Hitman. And that being kind of like a meme on uh, with wrestling fans too, like Jeff Jarrett is a meme because Bruce Pritchard would sing a song on that podcast. Like Brad, you know, Jeff Jarrett is at least smart enough to turn it into like jobs and shit. <laughs> Jim Cornette is fucking Cornette, you know what I mean? They made him a meme too, and he couldn't he couldn't do anything with it except he's a piece of dumb piece of shit. <laughs> like Jeff Jarrett's just a smart piece of shit. <laughs> I don't know if Joe listens to this po- podcast anymore, but he he might turn it off after that. We'll find. I was gonna say we'll find out. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I like Jeff, but in the minority there. Yeah, people like memes. I get it. I for me, I like him more because like when I was a kid, like I hated him. But 
Yeah, and then he, when I was a preteen, I hated him. And then when I was a teenager and I watched TNA, I fucking hated him. Like, I hated... Yeah, I've always hated this man. I think he's bad. But I thought, <laughs> like, he was, like, really good at making me hate him when I was a kid. I compare no, he him... Just did, he just stalled. He was boring. He stalled a lot. He just did crowd brawling. He fucking sucked. Jeff Jarrett's a boring wrestler. Not only is he not good, he's boring. Who's more boring? Jeff Jarrett or Bret Hart? Jeff Jarrett is a million times more boring than Bret Hart. <laughs> You would you would rather watch a Bret Hart match than a Jeff Jarrett yes. match? Absolutely, yes. Wow, how are you and Joe friends? Do you, do you, well, at least you don't hate Raven. Like I think if you hated Raven, oh, Raven fucking or, rules. I hate him as a person. He he's a dick. <laughs> but I think I don't hate watching Raven wrestle. Yeah, if you hated like Raven and uh, Terry Funk. Yeah, actually, if you hated Terry Funk, I wouldn't. I don't think anybody would trust you. Like if you don't like Terry Funk, like you're better. You, the only reason why you should not like Terry Funk is just because. You don't know who Terry Funk is, and that could be excused depending on your age. But Terry I Funk. think my ex hated him, but she only saw him be an old man that one time from a clip at AIW. And she was like, "This is the guy that you all love. This is a fucking old man." Well, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." But you're, yeah, you're seeing the older version. You, I don't know who to mention of like if you saw someone now, but you compare them like compared to like their work when they were younger. It's like yeah, like that, their younger work was better. What do you mean? We just saw it. We just saw Junakiyama. <laughs> and a bunch of people are like that was I mean that was all right but it wasn't great it's was like well yeah dude but Junakiyama was like fifty three like <laughs> I love Junakiyama for like what he did like I still watch him now and it's great but like definitely not compared to like I'm Junakiyama it's like watching Flair you could say now but I'm, I'm gonna be nicer to him like watching him in the two thousands yeah and being like I don't get it because I will admit like I started watching him in the late nineties. And I was like, ah, I don't necessarily get it. But if you compare it to that to the NWA stuff, fine. I get it. And then Flair and Jeff Jarrett, like, have a match. No, I'm kidding. I mean, they did, but... Almost died. Uh, he, he, he passed the uh, the WWE wellness, t- or whatever the fuck the... They did the NXT um, endurance, like... Endurance, yes. Conditioning drill twice. I wanted to say wellness nice. test, but that's a different thing. <laughs> You whispering to your cat? I don't know. I said twice, and then some lyrics in my head. <laughs> oh, I can't wait till that bit's over. That is not a bit. That <laughs> I love twice. <laughs> like that's not a bit at all. I fucking love twice. I, I know it's not a bit. I've seen you talk to Christina in real life. Like yeah, stuff that, that just makes me so happy. <laughs> Makes no fucking sense to me, but anyway. Uh, no, not at all, man. I don't know. It makes me bring my happy chemicals, and I'm in no position to question that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking you for it. I just, I just said I don't understand. I love it. twice. <laughs> oh my god! Can't wait for that World Tour 2023. It's been announced. No dates or nothing. So excited. How many places do you think they're gonna go in the states, though? Like how how big uh, is uh, big cities? Chicago, Philly, Atlanta. They seem to hit a lot. Chicago, New York, uh, L.A., Houston. So you think you're going to probably have to go to Chicago or... Chicago or New York. Yeah. I was like, I don't think they would fucking come to Cleveland, but yeah, big cities, nah. big cities make sense. Chicago definitely has its own um, mix of people to where I could, I could see there's a fan base there, or at least there's enough within a surrounding area. People wanting to drive. Same thing with New York and LA. Like, yeah, I could, big cities make sense to me, I guess. I don't know. When I think world tour, I think like you're going to hit a lot of stops all like all over the world. So I'm thinking, like, yeah, you'll have, like, that the North America uh, leg, which, you know, have, like, a lot of cities. But, yeah, you're going to hit the major ones, I guess. I think my, my equivalent of that is, and I don't know if I'd ever want to go to the concert because I would feel too creepy, uh, is Billie Eilish. I like Billie Eilish. But I don't know. She's not in twice. What's that? She's not in twice. I, I know she's not in twice. Yeah. But I'd feel, I'd feel too creepy going to her concert. That's what I said last time twice on a tour earlier this year. I was like, almost glad I didn't go because I'd have to go by myself right now. And uh, I think that'd be weird. But then I, I saw the crowd that, like, Itzy just toured uh, the country. I have no so idea. Crowd. It seems to be like everybody's like in their 20s and 30s. Like, it's, it's like, oh, maybe that's just too K pop. Like, who's into K pop in this country? Maybe it's not like, you know, how, like, it's, it won't be like it. I don't know. Taylor Swift, I guess. I don't know who's popular anymore. <laughs> Billy Eilish. Never <laughs> sad age where, I, yeah, I guess Billy Eilish. I don't know who's popular with like uh, t- teenagers. Death grips. <laughs> I I think if 
Billie Eilish might be the, I don't think it's the best one because I'm old too. And the only reason why I listened, I list, started listening to her was the James Bond theme that she did. And I was like, ooh, I really. I've never seen a frame of a James Bond movie. <laughs> I never, I didn't watch one until 2021, I think it was. But well, the pandemic was hard on all of us. So I can understand. <laughs> but even before that, I actually I can't say that I I tried watching Skyfall years ago, but I didn't get into it. I always liked uh, Bond themes, like Garbage had a really good one. Yeah, I remember that one from TRL. <laughs> I remember it from making the video. Uh, the world's not enough. I like I thought that was a really good song. I thought Adele's uh, Skyfall theme was really good. Weird Al did. Um... Fake Bond theme for some like Spy fake Hard Bond movie. Spy Hard. Is it Spy Hard? Yes, yeah, Spy right. Hard. Uh, that, I need to go back and rewatch that because after watching Bond movies, I did go back and rewatch all the Austin Powers movies. <laughs> Be oh, like, no. oh, I kind of get this more now. Don't don't hate on Austin Powers. There's there's no way those hold up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like ah. I leave the memories alone on those ones. There's no way those hold up. Not a chance. I can't remember. I think I liked them, but I can't remember holding up. But there's two movies from the 90s where the first one everybody loves but does not hold up not as many people love two but two is a lot better ace ventura they're all right i guess i don't know oh. yeah, those are another ones where like i don't know that i would Let, let's put it this like, way uh, youtube you know how youtube has movies you, like you can watch them free with ads right they have the mask up and i'm like i don't know if i can do that Loved that movie when I was a kid, and there's there. I don't, I don't oof, woof, I don't, I can't imagine that's still gonna be entertaining to me. The, the thing with the first Ace Ventura is it's a little transphobic, yeah, like it didn't age well. I think maybe that's not the holding up thing, it's like it didn't age well. Two ages fine, and I always, I always loved two, but everybody was always a bigger fan of the first one. Dude, I almost watched Out Cold the other day, and I was like, no, I can't. This has got to be shit. Like, there's no fucking way this is a good movie. And, and, like, I loved that movie when I was in high school. I was like, I can't do that. I already did that with Rules of Attraction, where, like, that was my favorite movie when I was in high school, and I watched that, like, last year, and I was like, this is fucking bad. (laughs) I don't remember that movie. Rules of Attraction was a Brad Easton Ellis book, and it's the same guy that wrote American Psycho. And, uh... It's not like and they marketed it like a teen comedy, like American Pie, and it is not that. It is a like pretentious ass art film. <laughs> like it is so up its own ass. It is wild, and it is not good. <laughs> that was my favorite movie when I was in high school. I loved it. Lots of just college kids doing drugs. So PME members only. What do you got? Yeah, PME. My advice is do not watch Rules of Attraction. I don't think I don't think you guys would like it, and you'll win this match. That's who I pick. PME. Oh, you're picking PME. Not picking, um, not picking members only. Oh, I'm gonna go with PME. I'm gonna hope that motivates members only. <laughs> PME's gonna win this. Uh, but members only, you guys should watch Out Cold. I think you would enjoy it. <laughs> I'm gonna go members only. All right. Let's move on to the next one. All right. We got Wes Barkley versus who? This has got to be Matt Cardona, right? This is Matt Cardona. I hope uh, Wes embarrasses him. <laughs> Matt Cardona fucking sucks. <laughs> what a fucking dork. <laughs> How dare you, dare you say things about Broski? What a fucking loser dork <laughs> Matt Cardona is. God, he fucking sucks. A boring fucking turn. <laughs> Bro, if the most interesting thing about you is like, I like toys. <laughs> it's like, that's why. <laughs> you see what Catholic can do? <laughs> Have you seen that before? You're coming in here with, I like toys. Fuck off. What if you like Power Ranger toys? Uh, Ethan Page does, and that's like not even one of the most top 10 cool things about Ethan Page. You know what I mean? Like, Matt Cardona made that his entire personality. is like, I like hunks of plastic <laughs> that are in shapes of things that make my brain remember back when I was a kid. <laughs> and it's like, that's it? Yeah, that's it. That's my... <laughs> Man. Perpetuates nostalgia. Poison. Let it go, people. I don't need any more Star Wars movies. Nine movies is enough. As I'm, as I'm sitting in my office and I have, like, a bunch of figures, like, surrounded me. Style just a prison, man. You gotta escape it. New things exist, and it's just as good. Just give it a chance. 
do some new stories. We don't need everything to be Marvel and Star Wars. And uh, we're talking about like a, if you could do another Harry Potter, let it fucking go. It's seven books and eight movies. It's not enough for you. Let a new fucking thing happen. You motherfucker, seen Owl House? It's better than Harry Potter. <laughs> like, it's so much better. That was almost the name of Pod Van Dam last week. Owl House. Owl House fucking rules. Wes Barkley's a wild face. You know what I mean? <laughs> Very unnatural. A dog walking on its back legs. Uh, really? Like, you think so? Yes, he's such a natural heel. I get very uncomfortable watching him as a face. I think even before he debuted, I thought he was like a really likable guy. But being really likable, like you could you could flip that, and that's what he did. But then again, half the reason why people didn't like him was because of the Barkley Nation. Like people it hated his friends. It wasn't yeah. even him. They didn't like his friends. Yeah. He turned, <laughs> turned West Barkley heel because his friends were annoying. Like, do you remember that <laughs> Wes showed up on the AIW podcast like long before he ever debuted? No. I do. Because that's when I first learned who he was. Back and was also back when his Facebook was under his real name. Ooh. That's that's since been changed because I was just like I think this Wes Barkley is this dude that I keep seeing on Facebook, but Wes Barkley, I just, I just know his voice and everything from the podcast. Yeah, it, it, it's him. But yeah, that's my own, my own two cents. Like I've always liked Wes since the moment I heard him on the podcast. So it's a natural heel though. Wouldn't it be funny if he turned on JB at some point. That's the opposite where I think Josh Bishop's like a natural baby face. Like I think they're a great duo together and it works well. Yeah, I think they're both really good at like one, one and uh, the other one's really good at the other. I think th- I think they're both good at both. Like the yeah. thing thing with Bishop is he has Ooh, that Bruce Bishop ever. <laughs> what I'm saying is, and I'm saying like bigger picture, other companies type stuff, where I could see like the reason why p- people would not like Bishop. Why he's a giant, very intense dude that like throws people. It's awesome. There's like. Are they dorks? Potentially. Who wouldn't like Josh Bishop? That's insane. I, yeah, no one's booing Josh Bishop. He's just throwing people through fucking I mean, doors and shit. It's awesome. No <laughs> one's no one's booing him in Cleveland or no, Northeast no Ohio. You couldn't imagine booing him anywhere. People definitely boo him. Like when he he turned on Filthy and Black Label. Like that. that was people kind of, booed? Yeah, I thought he I thought he was booed after that. What a bunch of dorks. But he turned on, like, he turned on Filthy. You don't like Filthy? Yeah. Oh, I love Filthy, but then he probably was, like, fucking shrugged. It was like, ah, ah. <laughs> like, how are you going to prove that? Just fucking flexed and he's giant and he yelled a lot. And like, what? I'm gonna, why would you prove that ever? Like, one of the dopest things in wrestling to be a giant guy that yells a lot. Like, well, the sport is based on <laughs> every, every, like, major dude except Austin pretty much was a, a giant guy that yelled a lot. I mean, Cardona Austin ruined it, you know what I mean? Hogan, Warrior, Sting was a giant guy that yelled a lot. Vader, giant guy that yelled a lot. Bret Hart? Let's see. Oh, you're right. Bret Hart's where it stopped. That's right. I, it's not Austin. Bret Hart is what stopped giant guy that yells a lot. Bret, uh, Sean, then Austin. That's like your tic-tac-toe. Austin. Who else we got? When was the next giant guy that yells a lot to be a champion? <laughs> After Austin. Triple H, I guess, that is Roy most was a giant guy that yelled a lot. Man, how could you not like him then? Oh, I thought because he fucking retired Mick Foley and then <laughs> he turned into like an actual. And then I realized he did an actual piece of shitty things. Yeah, that held down wrestlers that I really enjoyed. That's what it was. It was just like everyone that Triple H fucked with was like my one of my favorites. <laughs> like it wasn't ever like uh, Triple H is uh, holding down like. I don't know, Charlie Haas. <laughs> it was like Rob Van Dam like when he was his coolest. And it was Booker T when he was at his coolest. And it was CM Punk. And it was just like all these awesome people. Brian, D- fucking Brian Danielson. Like, I think Quest is a really good baby face, huh? <laughs> you know who's a really great baby face? Matt Cardona. Oh, he fucking is not. <laughs> that, that is a giant unlikable turd. For sure. <laughs> that dude fucking sucks. Would you rather watch a Matt Cardona match or a Jeff Jarrett match? 
God, what a fucking nightmare scenario. <laughs> Honestly, it's such a toss up. I think they're both like very boring and the same. Like, can't believe you. At least did. Jeff Jarrett bled a lot. I'll go Jeff Jarrett. That dude <laughs> bled a lot. At least like Matt Cardona, they can't even fucking do bleed a lot. He's like, <laughs> he did bleed a lot one time and never did bleed a lot again. To uh, to Cardona's defense, he was still pulling glass out of his body like months later. Good. That shit was dope. Do that again. That's the only <laughs> time you fucking mattered, pal. Like, are you shitting me? Can you imagine if anyone would give a like? I know you would because you're already a fan. I mean, like, it would be impossible to give a fuck about him if he never did that Nick Cage match. It would be impossible. He'd be an NWA guy for sure if he never did that Nick Cage death match. I like oh, he'd be control your narrative. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? The only reason that he matters is because he did that Nick Cage death match. Do another one. Like, I like Cardona, but easily that was like the best match. That, that, he, that he's coolest. had on the independence. That was the only time he was cool. That was it. Now, if we would have finally got to see the payoff with Bishop and Cardona, I would say that I loved the entire storyline of Cardona beating Bishop and like everything that happened along the way for Bishop to get the title back. Like that was great. But since we didn't get the real payoff, like that sours it a little bit. So yeah, the Nick Cage match, and that was like that's what he started off with. Yeah. It was his first one. He did the thing where he had a lot of belts. <laughs> I don't know. Matt Cardona just doesn't do it for me. Which is so weird because Zack Ryder was like, I really liked Zack Ryder. <laughs> I mean, I, I like Cardona, but I'm not a, a fucking diehard. I will say, I think listening to the podcast every week, the more I listen to it, the more I really like Smart Mark and Myers more. Brian Myers rules. That's the other thing. It's like he... <laughs> Brian Myers is fucking like, like he has great. a way cooler friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Smart Mark's I cool that's too. What makes me hate him more because he gets way more bookings than and Brian Myers is so much cooler than Matt Cardona, like so much cooler. <laughs> yeah, I, I I prefer Myers over Cardona. And like there those there's stuff that like Brian will say on the podcast where I'm just like ah oh, that's oh that's a reason for me to like you more. He rules. Brian Myers rules. I'll never say a bad thing about Brian Myers. Except for you don't like his friend. Yeah, he's fucking yeah, his friend's a fucking dumb fuck. I don't know. <laughs> like, so Cardona versus Wes, who you got? Cardona. Oh, you got Cardona. Yeah, he's just a dumb fuck, but he wins a lot. Like, there's no reason for me to not to think he's gonna win. He won a lot when he was around last time. You know what I mean? I'm gonna go Wes because this is a you know rematch from Wes getting his haircut. This. So, yeah, I think I have, I think he gets a win back here. All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. Bulking season, putting up the AIW right. tag team titles versus who? This is a little cheating because I did see the uh, the Twitter video, and I just I'm now reminded that I did see that Twitter video, so I know that it's nine to five. Which I love that video. It was really good. I'm it was really good stuff. I'm a huge fan of like when wrestlers make different promos. Yeah. Ones that aren't just like cookie cutter and cookie cutter in what you say and cookie cutter in like the same kind of background when you're like doing different things, which is something I think AIW as a whole does really well. So when this gets shot and it's being shot from the back seat of a car and you have bulking season in the front seat, Chuck fucking makes me laugh where he just goes, I fucking hate those guys or, or no, oh, I'm so angry. <laughs> Or they make so me angry. angry yeah. yeah, like I fucking busted up laughing because it was just a simple line. And then when you go into like an office space reference, I'm like, okay, this this is fucking great. It was really good stuff. You gotta win. There's no fucking way nine to five wins these fucking belts. I hate them. <laughs> Would you rather see Matt Cardona or nine to five? Nine to five. I, like, I hate nine to five how you're supposed to hate nine to five. <laughs> like, they annoy me. Uh, and then the music shit, I hate hearing it. Um, fuck it, there's just nothing likable about them. They're great heels. There's nothing likable about 9 to 5. <laughs> like, <laughs> nine? taking away any reason you should ever have to cheer for them. <laughs> Anything. They're just fucking bad men with bad music and bad wrestling gear. <laughs> they suck. <laughs> 9 to 5 or 9 to censor? 9 to 5. 
Nine to Sensor was so like spot on. I, I, I still talk about it. I love it. This is also a rematch from Nine to Five's debut. In yeah. Area. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we're, we got to go bulking season, right? Oh, of course. Yeah. I can't want Nine to Five to win anything ever. <laughs> Ima- imagine if Nine to Five wins the titles. Not even here, just in general. No. <laughs> it sounds terrible. And, and then out comes to Infinity and Beyond. <laughs> And then they win it, and then they trade them back about seven or eight times. It's not like we've seen that formula already in it. Yeah. I think they should, uh, nine to five, definitely should lose. And then, and then the Bitcoin boys should get a tag title shot, probably. Because they'll be, win their match against Euthanasia. I, I do want to see Bitcoin boys become champions. I don't know where. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I I think I heard it more after Jaylit where people are like, oh, like Mikey and Eric are going to split. And I'm like, I don't know. Or maybe it's like I've even heard people say that they would uh, leave the Duke. Because yeah. Jaylit weekend I felt like was a big, big moment for Bitcoin because they were both cheered like crazy, like way more than we were used to in AW. I like uh, Mikey. I think he's good at wrestling. I should See if he's okay with this Jason David Frank news. I got to check on Reese too. <laughs> Get all my Power Rangers pals together. Kind of kind of transitions well to. A, I'm trying to hold Dexter off from like getting on my laptop or the soundboard, and I have my Dragon Dagger in hand. And every time he goes to try to do it, I just point it at him, and he stops. Or I use it to like push him. Like no, no, back, back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I swear to God. Nobody let nine to five win, <laughs> please. Yeah, this, there's no way. Got to get that absolution match, bulking season versus uh, crazy pain. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. All right, now let's move on to the last one, and it is the main event. Yes, yes. Accidentally hit that a little too early, but anyway, I don't even got to have you guess. Joshua Bishop versus Eric Stevens for the AIW Absolute Championship. Fuck. Yes, dude. This is going to fucking rule. I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. These are too crazy, man. Very excited. Eric Stevens is back, baby. Very happy. Have Bishop and Stevens had a match? Did they do Black Label? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I think it was a Black Label. Okay. Eric Stevens fucking rules, dude. I would would kind of guess to say that you were the biggest Eric Stevens fan like when he got announced for J-Lit. Yeah, man, Eric he was like one of my favorite ROH wrestlers ever. Like him and Roddy, that shit was just awesome. Yeah, I've always had it. Like a, I really, really liked Eric Stevens, and then him get that a couple years ago. Now somebody's coming back. Yeah, get announced for Jayla. I was very stoked. Yeah, that's that was fucking wild that that happened. Like, cause that should never happen. That's such a random indie guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he was never like the biggest name when, even like even as far as Ring of Honor, like. It wasn't like a main event like he did main event sometimes because that you know that's how that shit works but like he wasn't like a top dude a ring of honor it was very random for him to come back so like yeah very stoked about it and he gets to come back this next time and do another one that's dope i like it uh i'll strap him up i want that but like i don't like i just be so fucking cool like i i think about the idea eric stevens like aw absolute champion like number one that means we're gonna see him more uh, second thing that gives him like a a run with the title. I don't think it would be like yeah. you know just it wouldn't be an Ultra Manus Black situation. But I do like Bishop as champion, and I kind of feel like we need to see him hold the title for a little while longer. Oh, for sure. You're like, listen, I'm, I'm I'm being selfish and thinking of what I want personally. What I like, Eric Stevens should win. Uh, but like, I don't know. Yeah, Josh Bridge was your future, so I'd definitely. Big old run with that belt. I don't know. I love Eric Stevens, though. I mean, to be fair, like I, I just referenced him, but like, who also saw fucking Ultramanus Black become a champion? Granted, yeah, yeah. Granted, I think uh, he was a surprise uh, person on the show. Uh, I don't know what way to mm-hmm. describe it because it was like the main event was over, and then he comes out and like challenges for the title and wins. So like, crazier things have happened. But man, there's three singles titles in AIW. One is. <laughs> A women's title it's being held by someone under contract, but it's it's either this or the intense. And I would rather see him win this than the intense. But at the same time, like I don't want to see it. Um I hope uh they hit each other really hard. 
hope there's like no rules. Let's go no rules with this one. I want to see some doors. You know what I mean? I mean, aren't like all bishop matches <laughs> kind of <laughs> like fall under in, intense rules one way or another? Like even though he's not the intense champion, he is the intense icon. Yeah, it sure seems that way. <laughs> so yeah, I don't. Yeah, there, there's no way that we don't see some crazy shit. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I'll, I'm picking Eric Stevens. <sighs> I'm gonna go Bishop. Thumbs up for Bishop. Eventually, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Brock to record that for me so I can throw it on the soundboard. I'm glad he's back, uh, especially because it makes uh, Priest Tom Lawler right. Tom Lawler said, "No way, their retirement's sticking." Wrestling <laughs> fans, only ones dumb enough to pay fifteen dollars for a cookie. But I think deep down, Tom knew, like, nah, Eric's going to want to wrestle again. Loves this shit. Or sometimes you don't love it. You got to go away for a little bit. And then, yeah. you know, come back and you love it again. You got to open up a business and probably not the right time. And Cookies rule, though. Let's be real. Oh, I I love the cookies. Those cookies are fucking bangers, dude. Those are really good. The only cookies that might be better... And I'm not saying Jonesy, because number one, I've never had those cookies. And number two... <laughs> Jonesy's are good. Like... I, I get that, but like, there's a reason why they're better, but not counting those. I really do love Ohio Pie Company cookies. I haven't had them yet. Oh, like to me, their pizzas are fantastic, and the cookies are fantastic. If you had to ask me, like, which one do they make better? I'd be like, I couldn't tell you. They're both so fucking good. It's not like you got great pizza and like, yeah, they're okay cookies, or like really good cookies and like shitty pizza. Like they're both. Oh. I I spend almost double my amount of what I spend on a pizza and on cookies. <laughs> so good. Anyway, I think I think Eric is still making cookies though. Yeah. I need I need to make an order. Cookie oh. Dad, dude, he rules. Next uh next absolute champ. Where does Eric Steven rank on your um Pod Van Dam guest list? Eric Stevens ruled because that's when he thought he was never coming back and we he got he, he told us some awesome shit. I was a big fan of that. I think the greatest thing is out in my head that you can ask ROH people questions about Gabe and they'll answer honestly. <laughs> and then Red Titus put that theory in bed real quick. He's like, fuck no, I'm not saying anything bad about Gabe. Gabe works for WWE. I think the, the greatest thing is even though he's back in wrestling, he wouldn't, he doesn't regret one fucking thing on that episode. I doubt. Ah, dude, he still talks shit about Gabe. He still tell funny Gabe stories, I'm sure. I'd love to pick Eric Stevens, but I'm picking Bishop. All right, that. Is all the matches. Any uh, final thoughts or last minute plugs before we go? This bar uh, at the venue has a touch tunes. Does it, does it like link up via yeah, Wi-Fi? I can play it from my phone. Yeah. yeah I'm going to play music from my phone the entire like uh, pre-show. You can't get on there for sure. I'm going to spend a lot of money to do that. But I, uh, I want to drink White Claw and listen to music that I like. So yeah. It's Sky Ferreira last time. Oh, yeah, plug. Pod Van Dam's out every Thursday. Thursday when Jonah remembers. Thursday, yep, there it is. Every Thursday, a new episode. Like, I'm on that. Check that out. <laughs> if you don't hate me for making fun of uh, MGK, you should check out <laughs> the show that I'm on. Actually, if you hate him for MGK, I don't know if you're going to like the rest of the show. I'm not. Hey, I'm not very likable. <laughs> Because like, maybe you like Jonah. I don't know. Check it out. Mm. <laughs> like so, like, maybe I don't know. There might be somebody. There's four of us. There's, the odds are you're gonna like one of us. They all be like, well, the fucking odds. I like Jonah, but I don't know about Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're both great. <laughs> Check that out, though. Listen, I swear, I swear to God, do it. <laughs> and I'll be I'll be back on on a question when we take voicemails. <laughs> Ever gonna do one of those? Oh, me doing another one with the voicemail? Yeah, yeah, on your on your show. It's been almost a year. Um, I was just, okay, so I have done one. I was gonna say I kind of remember doing one. Yeah, we, I say it. we did do one because I want I wanted to do a bit where you called in and like you left enough spaces and then like you just like responded to yourself to where okay. like it would sound like a conversation, but like yeah, I don't get I didn't give you long enough head notice, but all right. Uh, the plan. For next month, I do want to do one of those episodes. Uh, not with you, Ed. No offense. Uh, the idea. No, that's fine. <laughs> the idea was because I was going to do it last week, but it was going to be with Pam, and we were in like we were actually going to like kind of pick a topic and talk about food. Be- oh, right. Because last time she was on, we talked. There was a lot of food talk, and people were like, "Oh, like I really enjoyed that. Like you guys should talk more about food." So I was thinking like, "Oh, like we can do like 
I don't know, like just throw food questions at us, like through the voicemail and like, we'll talk food. But uh, she was doing shit in Pittsburgh for a week and it was falling right around oh, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Falling right around the times, like at the end of it when this show would record, couldn't necessarily fit it in. And then with my Wednesday nights are dedicated to wedding, Potter Van Dam, so couldn't do it then. So it was just like, yeah, I took last week off. Just didn't even mention it on this show. But yeah, that's pretty much why I took it off. Because I was like, ah, I'm not shuffling to try to find another show. I'll just throw that episode out next month. Maybe it's a bonus episode. So I'll, we'll f- that's going to be something I figured out down the line. But yeah, the I accidentally kind of gave that that uh version, that, uh, I don't know the way I want to describe it, the ty- that type of episode a break. Yeah. Because I was, I was trying to only do it like once a quarter. And I, yeah. haven't, I haven't done one since the third quarter of last year. Those are good ones. Yeah, I think it's, it's fun too because like, breaks up a little bit of monotony of this show. People can ask different things compared to Pod Van Dam and now mm-hmm. At Odds. So it's like whatever anybody would want to do. But I think maybe with At Odds now doing it and obviously Pod Van Dam being every week doing it as well, it's like, I don't feel that it's as much of a need. And I've just done other stuff, especially with like the summer of AIW shows where there was like so many, so much shit in between. Yeah. <laughs> so I necessarily didn't have to do one. Yes, uh, I hope to do more. It just comes down to planning. And uh, for me, you can always find me at jsummers330 on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, much like you can find the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook.com slash resting cheers, Twitter.com slash resting cheers, and Instagram.com slash resting cheers. Email, if you so choose, desire resting cheers at gmail.com. Like I said earlier in the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. Your Everless is Fine podcast. Whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Amazon Music, or Podbean, Podbean.com. And all of those links are in the show notes and under the link tree link. Check out our podcast friends such as Pod Van Dam, Super Fantastic Podcast, It's Evolution Baby, The IndieCast, Sobros Network, Biff Radio, GameWorks Podcast, Powerbomb Jitsu, Spotlight Series, Fully Posable, Positively Pro Wrestling, IWTV Guide, If You Catch My Grift, At Odds With Wrestling, Marks With Mikes, X Over, The Powell Driver Podcast, Tornado Tag Podcast, The Uncut Wrestling Podcast, This Ends At Prom, and Porch Talk, and check out our other non-podcasting friends, such as The Mystery Men, Red Light Radio, Mouse's Wrestling Adventures, VHS Party Tonight on Instagram, Danger Zone Video in Juliet, Tennessee, Heart of Gold, Toy Hio Toy Show, Time Capsule Toys, Stay Tough, Smoke and Jay's Barbecue, JCP Designs, Midwest Territory, Southern Underground Pro, and the official graphic designer of Wrestling Cheers, Moy Boy Designs. That will do it for us here on Wrestling Cheers, where everybody knows your name and go go Power Rangers. Later. <laughs> It's the wrestling cheers. Get up on your feet. Praying in your day in the middle of the week. And you gotta love the show. Yeah, you know it holds a title for the best podcast. Talking wrestling in Ohio. Finishing a cold one. Take a load off. We ain't all about the prohibition like Josh. So we cheers. And then we sit back. Other shows are in the trash. Kinda like they Nick Stapp. Like the name is Matt Justice. Wearing all the gold. Wrestling Cheers is coming to a close. The number one podcast going in the game. And one day everybody's gonna know the name. It's the Wrestling Cheers. This is Platinum Max. Signing off. Ohio. Good night. The world. Good night. We love you. We'll see you next week.